Hi everyone and welcome to this week's War's End History Story. As this will be my last War's End video of 2023, I would also like to take this chance to wish you all the very best for 2024. This week I am covering a few little stories connected to the Albion Inn in Willington Quay. I had hoped to cover the history of the pub, but it seems that at one time there was more than one pub in Wilton Quay called the Albion Inn or the Albion Hotel, and this meant the information I was finding could be about any of the pubs and not the one on screen at the moment. It did get quite confusing trying to work out which pub was which, and I decided that it was better to just use some of the later stories and perhaps try the history of the pub at a later date when I have more time to really delve into the history of it. And I had also found details of an Albion Hotel which stood at 43 Potter Street, which was for sale in 1868. It did, however, cross my mind that this may have been a typing error and should have said 66. Typing errors were quite common in the old newspapers, but it certainly didn't help with the confusion over the pubs in the area with the same name. So, I am covering as many little stories as I can and have to hope that they are all related to the pub in question, as some of the earlier newspaper articles give such little detail that it is very hard to be sure, but I hope you will still enjoy the video. In 1860, the landlady was a Mrs. Hannah Brown. Hannah was married to Lancelot Brown and they lived in the pub with three of their children, one of whom was Nicholas Brown, who would later take over the running of the pub with his wife. In 1860, Hannah found herself involved in a case of attempted theft. A boy by the name of James Wilson, who came from Whitby, had been found by Mrs. Brown trying to steal nine sheets, eight pillowcases, eight tablecloths, eight napkins and some other small items from the pub. He had at first said he was not trying to steal anything and he was just hiding from some boys who were chasing him, but he later confessed to his crime and was sent to Morpeth Prison for six months. There are many stories of drunk and disorderly connected to public houses in the past and it seems that even the landlords were not immune. In 1887, James Pringle, the then landlord of the Albion Inn, was in court for having been drunk and disorderly at Wall's End Ferry Landing. It seems he had got off there by mistake thinking he was getting off at Howden. When he was told he was at Wall's End, he shouted abuse at the ferry master and continued to do so for quite some time. No details were given, but I suspect that he did have a free ride back to Howden and not on a ferry. He was fined five shillings and costs for his behaviour. In 1912, the owners and the then tenant of the Albion Inn were awarded a total of £2,299 as compensation for the licence not being renewed, the tenant receiving around £160 out of the total. It had been stated that the pub was due to undergo alterations and was not suitable to be opened. However, there, this had changed at a later date and the compensation appeared to be for money lost while the pub had no licence and had to be closed. In 1913, two men named James Morrissey and Charles Adams were involved in an accident when a wall fell down at the Albion Inn. The pub at the time was in the process of being rebuilt and the accident happened as they were removing stones from an old wall. It was said that Charles Adams was slightly injured when some of the stones fell on his leg, but James Morrissey was unhurt. It was not the only time an accident occurred during the rebuild. Sadly, an elderly gentleman had died when he had tried to pass the hoardings which had been put up around the building and a cart which had restricted the space between the pub and the tram line. It was said that the man was somewhat deaf and did not hear the tram approach until it was too late. In 1913, John Quinn, who lived at Western Road and was the manager of the Albion Inn, was charged with having stolen £10. 
James Walker, on behalf of Emerson and Sons of Newcastle, said he had gone to the Albion to do a stock take. Mr Quinn was not present at the time, so Mr Walker sent a message to his lodge and house and asked him to return. However, he did not answer the message, so Mr Walker continued with his job. A short while later, Mr Quinn arrived, saying he had been at Jarrow. Mr Walker told him he had been away from the pub for far too long. He then asked him for details of the takings from the previous Sunday and while he was writing the details down, Mr Quinn left taking the safe key with him. The safe was then forced open and it was estimated that around £10 was missing. It was stated that Mr Quinn did not live at the pub as it was currently being rebuilt but it was still open for business and it seemed that only Mr Quinn had, could have been responsible for the missing money and the magistrates decided the case would have to go to trial. At a special court hearing it was stated clearly that the missing money was only an estimate but as manager Mr Quinn was responsible. However, it was noted that other people, including workmen, had access to the pub. And when asked why he had left and taken the safe key with him, Mr Quinn said he had walked out of the pub in a temper as he was annoyed at Mr Walker for telling him that he had been away from the pub for too long. He then stated that the pub had not been as busy as expected recently and takings had been lower than thought. His defence said the case of theft had not been proven and it appears that the magistrates on this occasion agreed and Mr Quinn was found not guilty and was discharged. However, it would seem that he lost his job as manager of the Albion Inn. In 1915, the manager of the Albion Inn, Thomas Stoker, was fined 10 shillings for having neglected to obscure the lights of the pub during the blackout. It was quite common for people to be fined for allowing lights to show. It was not just public houses that this would happen to, it would also happen to everyday people living in the various streets of Wall's End and the surrounding areas. And at the same hearing, a further nine people were fined for the same thing, with fines ranging from five shillings to ten shillings, although there does not seem to be any clear reason why some people were fined more than others. In 1949, there was an announcement in the papers stating that the new proprietors of the Albion Inn were a Mr and Mrs Rainbird and that they would like to invite everyone to the opening on Monday, September the 5th. There would be music on the piano from a Mr Walter Bell. I believe that the Rainbirds had been managing the pub prior to this as in 1948 they had been advertising for barmaids with good wages offered. There is very little newspaper information after this as in later years public houses rarely made the newspapers unless to advertise their business or if they were under new management or had been refurbished. The Albion Inn continued trading for many years to come after 1948 with many different owners over that time and although it wasn't a pub I ever went into I know many people listening to this story will have fond memories of the place. By around 2014 it closed its doors for good and was later put up for sale. From memory I believe the first time it was put up for auction it did not reach the required amount but at the next sale it was sold. Since then nothing has really happened to the place and it is slowly falling apart as can clearly be seen in most of the photos used in this video which were taken earlier this year. It does seem a shame to see it like this and it would be lovely to see it restored once more but at the moment there is no information about what the current owners plan to use it for. As said earlier, I am sure many of you will have fond memories of this pub, so do please share your stories with me in the comments below. I do hope that you have found this short little video of stories about the Albion Inn interesting, and I do thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again very soon.